All right guys, so obviously this day and age, computer viruses are kind of a big deal. And even if you're careful, it's not that difficult to slip up and get a virus. Sometimes it's just a matter of going to the wrong website or an ad popping up or something and giving you a virus that way even without any interaction. So I wanted to go over in Windows the best ways to secure your computer and mitigate and lessen the risks of getting a virus and these are the best ways that I know of. Now the first thing is to make sure that your user account that you're using every day is a standard account, not an admin account. The reason for this is because most viruses these days, especially ones that drive by without any user interaction, really require you to be an admin to work properly. So if you're just a standard user and you don't have admin privileges, which isn't that big of a deal, then it means that the virus is not gonna be able to install itself, or if it is, then it means it's not gonna be able to easily hide itself in system files. So if you do have an antivirus program, it, it'll be a lot easier to remove any virus you get. So what you would basically do is have a admin account that you create separately and then your standard user account and you can change your account between these types. So it's not like you have to go back and create a whole new account. And then what Windows will do is if you ever have to do something that requires admin privileges, it'll simply ask you to type in the password and it's not that big a deal. It's not like you have to change accounts every time. So this is definitely something I recommend doing and a lot of people might say, oh, that's too much of a pain. I don't need it, but it really is beneficial. And you know, you gotta practice what you preach. I do it, I'm not above it because this is gonna especially protect you against even viruses that you don't interact with at all. And that's really the main risk there. Next kind of ties in with this with privileges is that is you should have the highest user account control setting. It's a little bit more annoying, but it's definitely useful in stopping viruses from doing stuff and installing themselves when you don't know about it. So if you are, I don't know, running a PDF or something, and then all of a sudden you get a pop-up from the user account control saying that something's trying to modify a system file, you're like, that's not right and deny that. Whereas if you don't have it set to do that, then it might try to install itself without you wanting and it won't even, you won't even know about it. So that's definitely something you should do. It's a little bit more annoying, but definitely something you'd need to do if you wanna be secure on your computer. Next, this one might be kinda of obvious, but antivirus, specifically one with web protection. And the reason for this, again, is to block you from accessing viruses that you didn't know were there in the first place, such as ESET Nod32, that's what I have. And what I like about it is that when you go to a website that might have a virus or it's compromised, they actually have a blacklist of websites that they know have viruses on them. So it's like a phishing link or something. If you click on it, it'll block you from going to it completely. And I would have had no idea and you would have gone to that site and now you don't have to worry about it. So I definitely think it's good to have an antivirus. People say, oh, well, common sense. All right, well, sometimes you can't avoid it. You go and do a Google search for something and you go to a website that's been compromised. You didn't know that. You're just clicking through Google. You wanna have some sort of antivirus for those situations where you don't know you're even engaging in any risk behavior. It's not just, oh, downloading torrents and stuff like that. Next has to do with Java. This is a really common piece of software that you're gonna see on a lot of computers, but a lot of times there's new exploits coming out for it and vulnerabilities, so you wanna make sure it's really up to date. So what I would do is make sure you have daily update checks enabled and also make it so it automatically downloads and notifies you before installing, not just before downloading. That way, whenever the update's ready, you can just click on it and confirm the install. It won't update automatically as far as I know, so it's not like it's gonna install stuff without you knowing. And then also, I would just disable the browser plugin. I would just disable content for Java completely. You almost never see Java plugins in browsers anymore, maybe really old websites. If you have to use them, I would put it on very high security mode. Now, the real reason you wanna do daily checks for updates is because of zero day exploits, which are often exploits that just pop out of nowhere and they're like, well, this is a big deal and they hadn't planned for it, they didn't know about it, and they wanna patch that right away because a lot of times hackers will use that zero day exploit if it wasn't known before because they know that people don't update every day, maybe if it's once a week, then they have a whole week to use that exploit on people before Java updates automatically if they have it set to weekly. The next tip I think is pretty obvious, but I really need to include it, and that is enable automatic updates for Windows. I think in Windows 10 you have to enable it, but just make sure you enable the security updates. Don't put them off for too long because there are important updates that go through there that will block vulnerabilities, 
exploits, that sort of thing. And it's just important overall to keep Windows up to date. Finally, I wanna talk about a really cool program called Windows EMET. This is actually developed by Microsoft. I believe it stands for the Enhanced Mitigation Exploit Toolkit. Don't quote me on, I'll put the right name on the screen. Basically what this does is protect against exploits. Now, what happens is you download the program, it'll run and monitor all the programs you set. There's a default list, I think, that comes with a lot of ones like Acrobat, Microsoft Word, that sort of thing. And then it has all these different exploits it knows about. And if that program tries to run a file that has one of these exploits, it'll block it. So a lot of times you'll hear people say, don't open PDFs from unknown emails because a PDF, you know, you don't think of that as a virus, but it can have exploits. And that's the type of thing that Windows EMET will protect you against. Just exploits that are not a actual virus program, but they take advantage of uh, regular legitimate software to install itself as a virus. It's not like an EXE or anything. So I definitely recommend this program. I actually made another video talking about this. I'll put the link here and you can check that out. But definitely something worth looking into because I didn't really know about it before, but it's definitely a good supplement to your antivirus. So I think that's pretty much it. I hope you guys enjoyed this and found this useful. If you did, give it a thumbs up so I know you liked it. And I'm looking forward to hearing from you in the comments section. And if you have any other suggestions, definitely let me know and I'm sure everyone else is interested as well. If you wanna continue watching, I've got some other videos on the right hand side. You can just click those or look in the description for the same link like if you're on a phone. And if you wanna subscribe, I make new videos Monday, Wednesday, Friday, so I think it should be worth it. So I'm looking forward to hearing from you guys either in the comments section or on Twitter. So thanks for watching. I will see you next time. Have a good one.